Good morning. So today we've had a package from Stacey's Miniature Masonry. So these must be the little versi slip bricks. So we'll open them and have a look. Okay, so let's open it up and see what we have. Okay, so just some information there about um, a dollhouse festival, an upcoming festival in December. Let's have a look here. Oh, wow, okay. So these must be the packs that I have, which are a thousand. And then I also have these ones, which are the, I think these are the longer ones, look, which are the corner bricks that just go around in a 90 degree angle. So yeah, and as I suspected, they don't weigh anything, so... I'm really, really happy with that. They won't make a big impact on the house, which is what I wanted. Uh, so, yeah, we'll open them up and we'll see how they look on uh, on the background. So, this is the background of one of the sides, the basement sides that I'd already pre-painted in the, the grey, which is going to act as like a cement colour. Um, and you can see the bricks. On one side, they have this sort of dark weathered colour. And on the other side, they have like a red, like a, a Victorian red colour. And if you mix them up, um, you know, just, just as you would standard, just picking them up randomly, I'm just going to stick them on however I find them, um, you'll get a really nice weathered appearance. So I'll line a few of those up and um, you can see what I mean. Okay, so I've just laid a few out here. I've not stuck them on, um, but just to give you an idea of how they'll look, as you can see, one side is the Victorian red and the other side is meant to be like more of a weathered look. So when they're all on together and, and there's, a, there's a lot on there, it should give a, a nice finish that doesn't look new. Um, obviously, this is a house which is supposed to be about 150 years old. So I didn't want something that, you know, would look too pristine. And I think this will give a, a really nice effect. So I've just laid these bricks out on one of the walls just to see how they would look. So they're not stuck down at all and I have knocked a few as you can see which is why they're out of place. But it is a good idea to have a practice run first just to gauge the um, spaces that you want between the bricks. Um, and because it's obviously on a small scale I do want a small... Um, a small gap between the bricks so I'm really happy with how they look I'm just not very happy with the grey background um, I think it's a bit light on there um, and I also think it would be better if it was um, aged up um, if you look at your own grout on um, or cement sorry on your house you know it's it's all different colours some's brown some's grey some's pinky um, some has moss growing on it or, or mould and is a little bit green or black um, and I think this is just going to look a little bit too pristine I think what I'm probably going to have to do is work out a way to age it so one of the other things which occurred to me which seems a little bit obvious but a thousand of these bricks it says it covers a thousand square centimetres and I did say on one of the videos oh that's a metre squared it's not a metre squared, it's far from a metre squared, it's a tenth of a metre squared. So I'm probably going to have to have a, a think about whether I want to do this because the, covering the whole house in these bricks is going to be quite an expensive way to do it. Um, as, and they look brilliant, um, but it is going to be an expensive way at £20 a bag. I'm, you know, the two bags that I got that I thought may be covering the whole house naively is is probably now not even going to do the basement part so i'm going to be probably spending hundreds of pounds on these bricks so i just need to have a little think about that okay so i'm going to have a go at just getting rid of this gray a little bit um i've raided my art supplies and I have a trusty sponge um and i've dispensed some sort of browns black greens um and i just have a little tub of water and i want a, a very sort of mottled camouflage effect almost just to break the gray up so we'll have a go and see how that goes. Okay, I'm just thinking actually that's quite camouflaged against my table now. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've just gone over with very much a watered down kind of mottled dabbing with a sponge. And then I've just gone over with a little bit more green um, with a dry sponge or the dry side of the sponge just to give sort of a little bit of a, a green which, which will hopefully show through and look like maybe a little bit of, you know, moss 
coming through on the brickwork. So I actually like that finish. Um, I'll obviously have to put some bricks on it and see how it looks with the bricks on. But I think that will just break up that grey and just add a bit more of a, a realistic finish. So we'll see what it looks like when it's dry and with some bricks on. Um, and then I'll decide if I'm going ahead or if it still needs more work. Okay, so that's all dry now. And um, I'm really happy with that. Um, this is not stuck on, by the way, these bricks. Um, as you can see, li I've literally just lined them up to have a look. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, it looks a bit black in there on the camera, but it's actually green. Um, and it just looks like a bit of moss growing. It just breaks that new cement look up, if you like. Um, and just, again, just adds a bit more, um, you know, a, a bit more realism to the to the age of the building. So I'm quite happy with that. So I think, um, yeah, moving forward, we'll be um, aging the, the panels up or, or, or adding this, um, this sort of camouflage effect, mottled effect, just to give it that nice touch between the brickwork. Now, a couple of other things have come to mind as I'm doing this. So in terms of keeping the brick straight, um, on the Tudor house, I actually had pencil lines drawn across and I went up the sides every centimetre and just marked off both sides and then drew a ruler line across. Now, after I'd attached the bricks, I then mortared it so it would cover up the pencil lines. Obviously, that is the backboard. So if I draw pencil lines across, you're going to be able to see them through the brickwork. Um, and if I draw them too faint, I'm not going to be able to see it over the paintwork. So um, I think I've got uh, two options. So I could go up the sides again every centimetre and then I'm going to have to put a ruler across and just move the ruler up as I um, sort of stick the bricks on so that there's nothing going directly across and that will act as a guide. Or I can put some masking tape across and again do the same thing, just move it up as I go along with, with the brickwork. Um so yeah, we'll 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 have a look. We'll start um, thinking about gluing some of these on, um, but but I need to get those those guidelines drawn first. A pencil line that we do need to draw on though is this bottom part here. So I need to know where not to put the bricks because obviously, as as we saw when we dry built the basement back, this actually slots into this piece. So I need to put a line across here to make sure that we're not putting bricks obviously below that, otherwise it won't fit into the groove. So that's all done now with pencil line on the bottom so I know where to start the brickwork from. Um, I've done the other side as well in that same kind of mottled effect so that one is uh, just drying. Um, so yeah, I think it's time to start the brickwork. Now any anytime you have doors and windows obviously you need to either paint them and, and get them in first before um, sort of doing the outside. Um, I, I haven't painted the windows yet so what I'm going to do is when I get near to where the windows go in I'll just slot one in um, just so that I can go around it with the bricks and then obviously once it's painted it'll just go in there nicely. Okay so I have ruler and sharp pencil and we'll get these centimetre guidelines drawn on.
Okay, so possibly the first mistake already, but I've got to the end here and I've got these long bricks which you curve around to act as, um, so it looks like a full brick and I've just tried it on the end and obviously I'm not going to have a full brick piece here now. So a couple of things have occurred to me here on this edge. So this is going to be the front part of the house. Firstly, I should have probably started with the corner bricks and gone that way because that's the house. And then at this side, if I'd have been left with half a brick or a weird brick size, it wouldn't matter because you don't really see it at the back. That's occurred to me. And then secondly, um, obviously this edge. So if I just turn it around, that edge I haven't painted or, um, or done anything with. Now that edge is going to be facing forward and obviously the front part of the basement is going to move forward and back against that. So I think I will want that that edge to be bricked. Um, now one of the other considerations, because I'm doing the whole house, if I do brick it, I need to make sure that the, do the doors will shut. Now these bricks are only um, very thin and because I have another house, I'm just going to try one of these slips and um, on the edge and just make sure that it won't interfere with the house where the, the hinges will go. Um, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so this is my Tudor house and I'm just going to try if I put a little brick in there. Ah, dropped it right by the hinge there. But can you see that actually, the, that gap is going to be fine to put brickwork on. So when the hinges are on, it's not going to affect where the hinges are but obviously I will need to think about that on the front of the house how the hinges are going to attach um obviously I probably need to put the hinges on before I start bricking it but certainly with the basement because there's no hinges I can actually go around that corner and then the front of the basement will slot up against it so these are the corner bricks as you can see compared to a normal brick they're quite a bit longer and how I'm going to bend them for the corners, I'm just going to, I don't know if you can see this very well, I'm just going to line the brick up with the other brick there. And then I'm just going to bend that round like that. So that will make it, can you see that? So that will make the, the, um, the bend that you need there and it will make this part here the same size as a normal brick. And then that should just slot on there to make the corner bricks. And you can see how that will work and you can see the problem that I've got. I'm left with a massive gap there now. So the only thing I can think to do, I'm just gonna have to take these two layers off. Hopefully if I use a, a sharp knife, I'll be able to get them off without too much damage. And then I'm gonna start the brickwork from this side so it looks neat going backwards. And then obviously whatever I'm left at the end, I'm not doing corners at the back because I'm not gonna be bricking obviously the back of the house. Um, and if we're left with two little small areas or two little small bricks, I can just cut them from one of the bigger bricks. But what I can't do is have these nice corners on here and then have this stupid gap here. Great. So this is not going to be as easy as I thought. Clearly these that I've already put on are going to be non-salvageable and it's going to leave a mark which if I can't get off I'm going to have to re-sand um, and repaint and re-weather this area as well. But we'll see how we go on. Okay, so they are all off and as you can see I've not been able to salvage many. I've managed to get a few. I would have probably been able to get more if I'd have tried harder but it just got my wrath now that I'd done it all wrong. Um, so I'm going to have to sand this, repaint it, re-weather it, um, but as you know I have to do these edges as well. So I've got the edge for one side of the basement and the other side of the basement. These will be the front edges. So we'll get those painted and weathered and obviously we'll sort this bit out here on the edge. Okay, so I've painted that bottom bit and the two edges, so I'll wait till that dries and then we'll do the weathering up. Okay, so we've painted, we've weathered up, we've got the line on again and we have the edge done so now we are going to start again but from the right side okay so that's back to the two rows done um and i'm pretty happy with that um it's not perfect but it's never going to be perfect when you're you know doing this with individual bricks these are all caught they vary some of them are, that one there for example is a little bit um shorter at one end um, so yeah, it's never going to be completely perfect, but I'm pretty happy with that look and I'm glad that I weathered up the back a bit because I think it just makes it look a lot more realistic rather than having that sort of bright 
grey perfect background um, so yeah quite happy with that um, I think I'm going to be bricking walls for the rest of my life though because uh, it is something <laughs> you definitely need patience for it and it takes a long time so it's not for the faint hearted if you haven't got the patience get some paper because you're going to be doing this for a long long time it's been 84 years <laughs> I'm sure if any of you have done this, you'll understand that completely. I feel like I've been going at this forever. But I just thought I'd do a quick video just to show you how it's coming along. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it. I know it's not exactly perfect, but I guess the age of the building, it wouldn't probably be perfect. Um, and I quite like the mottled effect at the back, how it's you know just starting to look like aged cement as well, which is much better than having the sort of neat finish. So I thought I'd just make a quick video because a decision needs to be made here. So I have this window and obviously the window, I need to decide whether I'm putting the bricks under or over. Now I haven't glued this one in um, and initially I thought I would cut round the bricks to suit. But as you can see, the side of these windows have got these curved areas. And I just don't think I'm going to get a very good finish if I try and cut round them. It's just going to leave gaps all the way around. So I think the neatest way to do it is just to put the the windows on the outside. So brick round it and then put the um, glue the, the frame on after so that the bricks will go under slightly. Now, the, the two reasons for this, firstly, well, three reasons. So firstly, there's the curves on the side. The second reason is that they're only very, very thin, probably about a millimetre or less, so they're not going to make a big impact and you won't be able to see any gaps where the cement is going up the side of the, the window, so it will it will still look quite nice. Um, and the other reason, if I turn this around to show you, so that's, if I hold that fully in, can you see how that's, or if that's protruding a little bit already into the, um, into the room so if it's out by a millimeter it's not going to be too uh, far back in the recess if you like it's not going to make any difference it's already sticking out a bit so if anything it will probably level it up so two reasons there and that's why I'm going to be um, doing the bricks up to sort of the edge or near the edge and then I'll be putting obviously that frame in um, after when it's all painted up so yeah we'll uh, carry on going Okay, so I've got one full panel completed now, um, and I've got to be honest, I'm pretty happy with the overall outcome of that. Um, it's They've gone on better than I expected. It is a long process, but um, I've quite enjoyed it. I, I can quite, you know, you can sit down, put a podcast on, some music, a bit of TV, and just work your way through it at your own pace. So I've been doing sort of a couple of hours every night, and that's took the best part of, I guess, a week now. So this video is quite long, so I'll wrap it up. I just wanted to um, give some hints and tips um, just for anybody who's using these Versi bricks. So tip number one, planning. Think about the coverage. It is, um, you know, they are expensive and I already made a mistake on the coverage. I thought a thousand square meters was a meter squared, which wasn't. So I'm going to need a significant more um amount more than i initially thought so yeah have a think about that and how much the overall cost will be for your project background so have a think about how you want the background to be finished um we did discuss obviously and you've seen earlier in the video uh, my trial and error and we ended up with this mottled effect which i really like and uh, i think it looks really nice when the bricks are on um it looks much more realistic that it's not all like perfect on there so grooves, have a think, tip three is grooves, have a think about places like here that's going to slot into another part, you don't want to brick them up because you won't get them in the grooves and the same at the top, as you can see here I've put a guideline on the top where I need to finish that. Tip number four is guidelines, so I just put lines here centimetre apart and the same at the other side and then I have been using masking tape just to move up. Um, if you can see that up, up at the top here and I've just moved it up sort of two centimeters at a time or, or and, and basically I've got um, kind of three bricks in so I've been doing three big brick rows at a time and then just moved it up as I've been going along tip number five is the starting side so you saw me make, make a mistake because I was going left to right which is kind of how your brain works because it's how you read 
um, but do have a think I would say with these bricks always go from the starting side so on this piece which will be the right hand side of the house you can see turn it around um, how I've gone from this side with the corner bricks and obviously then if you get some weird shapes at the end you can't see it because it's facing away from the house Tip number six, while we're talking about corner bricks, which are these ones here because they're extra long, so they go round and it looks as though it's a full depth of a brick. Make sure you're only using them where you need to. So these ones in between, I've just used a normal brick folded in half. So you get the half size ones rather than using these corner ones up because obviously you have less of those. Tip number seven, doors and windows. So you saw me put in a door, have a think about how it's going to slot in, the bottoms fell on that, off that now, but have a think how that's going to slot in and if you want to put the bricks under or over. I explained my decision to put them under on this one, but when we get to the front of the house, um, you know, with the bay windows, I need to start having a think and, and it might change when we get to those areas. Tip number eight, practice run. You saw me having a practice, put them on together, don't glue anything off, just have a, a, a gauge of how... Um, your spacing will look before you glue anything together if you've got tacky wax that's a good idea to try it with but if not then you know just do it and try not to to nudge them just so you get an idea of the spacing number nine cocktail sticks are your best friend not only for applying the glue to the bricks but also just to go around them after the spacing is pretty much perfect for a cocktail stick just to get rid of the surplus glue so that's tip number nine and tip number ten keep all the small parts of the bricks that you cut off so the little parts of the bricks, the edges, keep all those because you'll find that they'll often go on, um, for example, here. And you'll often find that those are perfect sizes for the areas around doors and windows or when you come to the end of the wall. So sorry this has been a long video, um, but I hope you enjoyed uh, running through. I did want to show you the sort of trials and, and errors of uh, how we've gone along there. Uh, the next video we'll be looking at building the second part of the basement, so the front part of the basement. So I hope to see you then. Take care.